Hello and welcome to Global Pulpit, where the world is our parish. I'm Camille Magdalene from Teach All Nations, and our goal, of course, is to help people be empowered through word and spirit by giving them the unchanging word for changing times. Remember that God's word is indispensable, especially for the present and future, as well as healing the past and bringing forgiveness of sins. Because by hearing and doing the word, you're building your life, your house, on a sure foundation, not on the sinking sand, but on the solid rock. We are in the midst of a little mini-series called Inheriting the Promises of God, focusing on the life of Caleb. And it's two parts, possibly three parts. But in the first part, we looked at how not to inherit the promises of God, the things you don't do if you want to miss out on God's best. Remember the children of Israel. They were born in Egypt. In other words, the generation born in Egypt, and they made an exodus under the leadership of Moses. They had everything to look forward to. And they all had the same collective spiritual experience. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, they all were baptized in the sea and in the cloud. In other words, they traveled through the Red Sea and through the cloud of glory. They drank of the same spiritual drink. They ate of the same spiritual meat because they drank from the rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, most of those people did not enter into the promised land. It wasn't because the journey was too long. It was only a matter of days or a few weeks. And it wasn't because the enemies were that potent. They were strong, but God is much stronger. It had to do with their own sins. And we learned about the sins in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6 to 11, but I'll quickly repeat them. These five sins caused the children of Israel, the Egypt-born generation, not to enter the land. And those sins included one, lust. Number two, idolatry, which is the same as covetousness. Three, fornication, which is not just premarital love or, as it were, uh, promiscuity. It also included temple cult rites, which had sexual implications. They also included tempting God, which they did ten times. That's too much. It's even ten times too much, let alone one time too much. And then, of course, murmuring. The language of the wilderness is murmuring, complaining, vilifying. They did all this when they heard of the ten spies giving a negative report of the land of Canaan, which they explored for 40 days, versus the minority report, which positive, faith-building, let's go at once, we are well able to take it. So they chose not to believe God, but to believe the ten negative spies. They knew the land was full of milk and honey, but they focused on circumstances rather than the promises of God. They said the walls are high, the giants are tall and big, we are just not able to take the land. Now, such corrosive negativism, the church has to work hard to fight against, because God calls us to walk by faith and not by sight. But many choose to walk by what they see, what they hear, be it in the media or from other people, and by what they feel. A very subjective age, and that can be dangerous. Because life is not about what we feel. It's about what God says. Because what God says endures through all historical periods, through all issues of the earthly realm, God's word endures forever, even if heaven and earth itself passes away. So we need to find a way out. The evil report of the ten spies brought despair, Numbers 14.1, brought murmuring, Numbers 14.2, brought rebellion, verses 4 to 9, and presumption, meaning they changed their mind and said, I think we will go and take the land after God said, you won't enter in. Just remember, the psalmist said, keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Presumption means you would presume to know better than the source of authority. And of course, that's God. We know better than God. 
Well, you'd be amazed how many times people lecture God on how he should run the universe. They do it all the time. It's presumption. And basically the evil of presumption is that we take the place of God within our own lives. And then there's the murmuring. Friends, you cannot murmur or whinge your way to victory, to success, to fruitfulness, and certainly not into the presence of God. I like a phrase I heard from Pat Robertson many years ago. He's the founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN, and Regent University in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And apparently when he started out in ministry, he I don't even think he had a place to live in. I understand he slept in his car, even though he was the son of a U.S. senator. But he said, never, ever complain. Because complaining, whinging, murmuring is the language of the wilderness. Psalm 95, don't harden your heart when you hear God's voice, because you will not enter into his rest. In Hebrews 3, verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing the living God. Now that we know how not to inherit the promises and enter into the land of milk and honey, let's learn how you can do it. And Caleb is our role model and our hero. All right, the reference, and we read it before, we're going to read it again, Numbers chapter 14, verses 20 to 24. Numbers 14, 20 to 24, this is after God told the faithless generation, you're going to stay in the wilderness 40 years, you're going to die in the wilderness, but Caleb is going to enter in. This is God speaking to Moses. Numbers 14, verse 20. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory, and the signs which I did in Egypt, and in the wilderness, and put me to the test now these ten times, and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. When you reject the promises of God, the land of God, you reject God. Verse 24, But... Thank the Lord for that word. When all seems to be lost, but. When it, the tunnel gets darker, when the pit gets deeper, when the clouds overshadow more and more, but. When that but comes, the clouds part, there's light at the end of the tunnel, the darkness is dispelled. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit or another spirit in him, and has followed me fully. I will bring him to the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Welcome to the world of Caleb, and welcome to Inheriting the Promises, part two. What does it mean to have another spirit, or to fully follow God? It means to follow him completely, full time, with all your heart, with all your mind, heart, soul and strength. There is no such thing as a part-time believer. I mean, I ran a Bible school. We had part-time students. Wonderful to welcome them in. Problem with being a part-time student is you come in for one morning and then for the rest of the week you forget that you're a student and then you come back into it a week later. That may work as a student. Some people are very adaptable. It doesn't work that well at all as a believer. We are called to walk with God day after day, to follow him with all of our heart, all of the time. Think of some key scriptures in this. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. All of it, not just some of it. Not just some of it all of the time, not just all of it some of the time, but all of your being all of the time. 2 Kings 23, 3, it talks about to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul. How about that precious promise? It's one of the greatest promises in the whole Bible. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and lean not unto your own understanding. And Jeremiah 29, 13, wonderful promise, and you shall seek me, and you shall find me, when you search for me with all your heart. We're getting the message, Caleb was wholehearted. He didn't just follow God with his mind. He followed God with his mind, his heart, his whole being. To have another spirit like Caleb is wholehearted. But there's more. To have another spirit like Caleb means to go from being religious to having the spirit of faith. Now, I know a fair bit about the Middle East and Asia, mostly the Middle East. It's a wonderful place, especially when it's peaceful. Many good things about it, though there are some glaring problems as well. But one of the things that you can say, not just about the Middle East, but about the great continent of Asia, from Beirut to Beijing, it is the most religious place on earth. All major world religions come from the continent of Asia, including Judeo-Christianity. And Asia has had many millennia experience at being religious. And if being religious would bring peace, then Asia would be the most peaceful place on earth. And the same applies to the East. But the fact is, many of the global hotspots which are areas with such trouble that if they're not managed by the grace of God and statecraft of the highest order, could explode into a regional or even global conflict. Most of those hotspots are where? In the most religious place on earth. So religion doesn't necessarily bring you peace. It might make your flesh feel good, but it doesn't help. And remember, the children of Israel could be religious, but that would not cause them to inherit the land. They had to have the Caleb spirit, the other spirit. It's not just a wholehearted spirit. It's not a religious spirit. It's not just a in my own flesh spirit, in my own strength spirit. It is a spirit of faith. And friends, faith is the muscle that propels you to the prize. Faith is what helps you get to the mountaintop like nothing else can. In fact, it doesn't just get you to the mountaintop, it can even move the mountains too. Yes, Caleb had the spirit of faith. And he learned something that we all need to learn. Faith is wonderful. It's a gift God already gives us, according to Romans 12, verse 3. And the more you exercise the faith you already have, do like a good workout. The more it's exercised, the more it will grow. I've discovered that faith has some interesting qualities. I've learned that faith has eyes. Yes, faith can see what normal eyesight cannot. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, it says, By faith he, meaning Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. How do you see someone who is invisible? The answer is by faith. I love what Jesus said in John 8, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Abraham saw Jesus' day, even though Jesus' earthly appearing was 2,000 years down the track from the time of Abraham. You know, when people wonder, will Jesus ever return? He's been gone for 2,000 years. Just remember this. There is a precedent historically. Abraham waited and saw Jesus 2,000 years before his first coming. So is it asking too much to wait on a God whom a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day to wait 2,000 years for the second coming? Faith has eyes. It sees him who is invisible. We learn that faith also has ears. Well, where do we get that from? Simple. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. Praise God. 
And then, not only does it have eyes and ears, and that's why I believe it's good not just to read the text, it's also good to hear the text. One of the things I do in my devotions, and I've done it for years, is that in the Bible reading, I don't just read, I also listen to it while I read. I get this from Proverbs 4. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear, faith has ears to hear, unto my saying, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep my word in the midst of your heart, for it is life unto those who find it, and health to all their flesh. Well, praise God for that, but we learn some more. Faith has eyes, has ears, and has a mouth. I believe that confession activates faith. What we believe in our heart will eventually spill out of our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, it says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. Believe first, speak later, and as I said before, confession activates faith. I love what it says in Romans 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Very interesting principle. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart he's been raised from the dead, and you shall be saved. It is so simple. Even a child can understand it. And then I love what it says in Jude 20. And in Jude 20 it says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Think of it this way. What Jude is telling us, it's not unlike going to the gymnasium and having a workout. The more you pray, particularly in faith, in praise, in thanksgiving, and in the Holy Spirit, you're becoming stronger internally. And when you're stronger internally, you're like a diamond. Remember, true diamonds can't be crushed because they're internally so strong. Even though the pressures and weights of our day can seem overwhelming, and they can be. There's no doubt about it. But God wants you to bulk up internally by being as Caleb, following God with all of your heart, all of the time, following him with a spirit of faith. Caleb exercised that spirit of faith. He said, let us go up to the land at once and take it, for we are well able to do that. He said that in Numbers 13. When the other spy says, we can't, Caleb said, we can and we will. That is the spirit of faith that is in operation. But also, let me focus again. The spirit of faith should fuel our prayers. Just as we learned in Jude, verse 20. Jude only has one chapter. You build yourselves up in your most holy faith as you pray in the Holy Spirit. Remember that the Holy Spirit becomes an intercessor for you and a prayer partner. We already know we have one divine intercessor. It tells us in Hebrews 7 verse 25 that Jesus is our great high priest and he's able to save us to the uttermost who come unto God by him, seeing that he ever lives to make intercession for us. You're always on Jesus' prayer list. But we learn in Romans 8 that the Spirit himself prays for us and prays through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. So when we belong to Jesus, he prays for us. When we pray, and particularly pray in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit prays through us, in us, and for us. Two divine innocent. One God, but there is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three personalities within the Godhead. That's why Jesus says, baptize those that believe in me in the name, singular, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Caleb entered into the land because he followed God fully, and he had a spirit of faith. A spirit of faith that can see, a spirit of faith that can hear, a spirit of faith that could speak, but you know what? There's even more. 
So we're going to have just one more part in this important mini-series called Inheriting the Promises of God. So don't miss it for the world. It will be next time. But in the meantime, let me pray for you to get rid of the religious spirit, get rid of the worldly spirit, get rid of the self-centered spirit, and start having the Caleb spirit that focuses not on self, which is the problem, but on God, who is the solution. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your word of Numbers 14, that Caleb had a different spirit. That's why he's a champion, a winner, a hero, a fruit-bearing tree. He not only got the promises of God, but set us an example for all eternity. I pray you will bless all that hear this message now and in the times to come, and let them put away the attitude and mindset of the ten spies, and instead adopt the Caleb attitude. Join the Caleb company because they have the Caleb wholehearted, faith-filled spirit. We praise you for this in Christ's glorious name. Amen. Well, praise God. Please like, share, and subscribe to the service. And you can visit us anytime at our website at tan, T-A-N dot O-R-G dot A-U. That's tan.org.au. Look forward to your company here at Global Hope.